Uh, George, afternoon. Thank you very much for deciding and agreeing to talk to me today. Um, obviously, everything we try and do with 101st is, is based around the power of real life experiences and, and stories. So I guess an appropriate place to start um, would be around your story. So looking at um, how you became a fresh rugby player, your journey to it, don't have to go in any real yeah. detail. Um, and I'm sure within that we can we can find a few moments to, to dive into. But to begin with, just your story, how did you find professional rugby and, and kind of get to where you are now? Uh, I'll give you a brief one, just yeah. jump in if you need to uh, expand on it. But um started at school, I, I wasn't part of uh, like a academy program so you how old were you when you started with Sarah? Uh, I was 14 yeah when I started yeah, club, yeah. So, so to put it in context I, I did school and I did club rugby um, I was highly passionate about club rugby um, so I was doing like a Saturday Sunday so I played a fair chunk of games but I hadn't really had any kind of uh, academies or anything really interested so until host school so I left when I was 18 um, and I, I had a trial for a week at Sarries which I'm sure you'll you remember me. Yeah, I remember well, yeah. yeah, nice and skinny. So, um, yeah, the travel was, yeah, every morning. I was I was small. Uh, I managed to get a trial um, at 18, and then I think within that kind of one thing led to another. I think I got injured it within that trial period, uh, and they kind of brought me back to fitness. Um, I think the the biggest thing that they kind of decided to keep me on on for was maybe the improvement I'd shown in in like a, in that month really. Um, and yeah, I think they just thought, let's you know, give it a chance. I think contracts back then weren't overly expensive. You know, I think I definitely got, I was getting petrol money for a first year. So um, uh, yeah, I remember it well, but it's funny because obviously having, we obviously came through together and, and played for a long time together, but two very, as you say, two very different mm. paths to, to getting your, you know, your first professional contract. Um, was there a big, like a marked jump from, you know, playing county and club rugby to then when you came to the club, where actually wasn't not that big because my experience is obviously being yeah. in the academy for a while before. Yeah, um, I'll say there would be, but like, must because I was in different situations than you. You, you, you lot were probably really ready to go and train with the first mm. team, uh, play some games, get stuck in. Like I was an absolute project. Like I, I had to be built in in a year. So I think the first year of academy worked really well for me because. Uh, you know, I wasn't with the first team. We, as a group, we weren't with the first team like like a lot of our academies are now. Uh, instead, I was given, I guess, um, a lot of supplements, a lot of gym, a lot of skill work, uh, and, and kind of basically had to build my my body uh, and build up my skill base, mm. um, build my fitness within that year. So that worked really well for me. And then when I was like 19 or so, then I was probably ready to play. Yeah. Some some games, whether it's kind of LV or the the mm. second team games. Um, but I still remember your first like because um, I think you, although you came, obviously you joined. If you take kind of yourself, Jackson, Jamie, mm. Owen, and me, you were the last one out of the five to join. But I'm pretty sure you, other than Owen, um, you were one of the first ones to actually play the the senior rugby, even with the A League stuff. I remember there was yeah. you played yeah. very well, didn't you? I think we had a fair amount of injuries at that point. Yeah. Like, at that point, unless you're unbelievably class, like you, you, you get your opportunity through mm. someone else's misfortune, uh, which is, you know, life. You get yeah. jobs through people getting sacked or however it works, you know. Um, so, so for me, that was an opportunity. Um, you know, and I think as long as you take it enough, uh, mm. then you know you, you put yourself in a good, good place. But I think the, the characteristics, uh, like it, it's not like you know, for me, it's not that someone sees you doing doing it unbelievably well like when you first get your opportunity but it's the the improvement you can make from that opportunity to the next one or yeah. uh, or like like i said the first year the improvement you can make within either your body your skills or uh, that that sort of stuff where i think coaches now are looking at um where they go okay well he's at this standard here but he's got he's got the appetite to get to this standard yeah uh, i think that's quite a big thing that you know, I, as a young person, you probably underlook, but as an older person, you you know, you, you take into uh, you take into account, I guess. Yeah. So if we if we like, as we talk through this conversation, we almost like chunk periods of your kind of career. So if you take that very early part as the first yeah. the first chunk, what would you say, looking back in hindsight now, because obviously we're looking at drawing learnings, and what would you say would be your biggest learning from that 
you know, that early part going from club rugby yeah. to professional academy level? Um, I think just the ability just to graft, I think, you know, was like for, for me, because I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't like unbelievably skillful or anything like that. I, I did maybe have a, a good mindset around being able to, you know, put put some work in. Um, and I think that was quite, probably quite, quite consistent within the group as well. So like we had a good group of people who wanted to work hard, who kind of, it wasn't like seen as uncool or whatever to, to work hard or to be, to be passionate about, you know, yeah. about getting better. Um, so I think that was, yeah, that was, that was quite, quite a big moment, I think. Yeah. And then, so if we move on from that then, so obviously you got yourself in the academy and as you said, we were very fortunate to be part of, obviously the U boys are still, still going at it, but there was other boys there at that time. We were part of, we were almost a team within a team in a way. Um, and I, I sort of look back and, and feel very fortunate that we had the people we had around us, as you say, the, the winners to drive and push on. So if we go from that then um, and then kind of take your time through Sarries before you you broke through with with England. So, you know, that, that kind of second chunk of your career. And even then, like, your rise was, was pretty quick. So I think, again, other than maybe Owen actually you might have been before Owen but I think you probably made your debut again before any of us did particularly well definitely before I did but you know before <laughs> I think I made mine at 25 an injury. <laughs> um, in debut in senior rugby yeah first team yeah yeah I, I think we had some LVs at mm. uh, 2011 or 12 I think I don't know. You, didn't, you benched the South Africa game didn't you well emphasis on bench I didn't yeah, you still, but, but, <laughs> yeah, but as in your you your involvement was in yeah, in, but again that was that was clearly like you look back at it now it's clearly because of injury and you know they got no interest in actually playing you but uh, but I think the, the involvement and, and kind of I think those yeah those opportunities where you can experience you know uh, first team warm ups first team uh, within the week and and, and the yeah. responsibility I think that was yeah that was well worth it um, yeah. but yeah like you know. I think you can, yeah, you, you work hard to a point and, and then you just need to start proving yourself and keep, you know, every time you can prove yourself, you then need to do it again because then yeah. it, it's about building trust within the coach. And I think that's so, like, it's not really seen as, um, I don't know, it's, it's not looked upon massively now, I don't think. I think it's like a, co a coach will spend forever trying to build, you know, like get your trust in actually the player uh, and that's that's quite obvious I think it's you know that first kind of not made necessarily your first game but that first kind of period of four five six seven games you've got to show that each game you're taking on board and, and improving from the last because otherwise it's like they might play you for three games and like if you're not really changing at all you're not changing anything that you've you know you've messed up and then that's like that's a good indication that yeah. you, you know you're not you're not probably ready for it so it's that it's that whole learning piece, isn't it? Because I suppose, and we'll get on to obviously your your business in a bit, but the same is true, I suppose, of any organisation where all you're trying to do is create this level of trust between um, yourself and either your line manager or, or whoever it might be, mm -hmm. and create a level of enough trust where actually they can let you learn and get on with stuff and grow and mature. And, and you're right in when you start playing, it's a very similar process you're trying to show that the coaches can trust you and that you're good enough to be at that level so when when you were going into those games you know and you, you start finding your feet in the first team and, and and you're starting those games was that actually in your mind at the time or is that something that you look back on with hindsight and if it was hindsight what what was your when you're going to those games what was your mindset in terms of what you were trying to do yeah I, I, probably not I'm in a different position to some others because like line outs, all that sort of stuff. Like there, you actually have to have genuine trust in, mm. you know, the fact that it is, it is it is more an experience-led role as well. So like it's, you've got to have enough trust that they can do that role uh, at the time when you need them to do it. Um, and that is something that that can be built. That has to be built over over a period mm. of time. But you can do that through, um, you know, so we prepare the first team for for, for so many training sessions. And in that, you that's your opportunity to build the trust, I guess, if you're not directly playing. So then you can then transfer that to when you're playing. And, you know, and if you start getting it right, then, yeah, they're, they're built on that, I guess. Um, 
So there's always opportunities to build those trusts, even if it isn't in like the like the the, the game or you know the, the big meeting or whatever it is. Like there's there's good opportunities to to, mm. to build that bit. And and in those those early years of playing, again pre international call ups, the learning curve is quite a steep one. I remember yeah. you know with, for all of us when we started finding our feet in the first team, just getting used to the the intensity and the, the, the amount of knowledge we needed to know. It's quite a steep one. So. Did you have like a set way of kind of going about how you you kind of took on knowledge or what coach you spoke to or how you spoke to them or, or was it a case of just kind of being a sponge and just letting information come on and then reacting to it when you got given it? Yeah, um, I think like just trying to learn in, in different ways. There were certain things like you had to, had to do and I guess that is part of the learning. So it would be, I'd have to have a look at line outs on a Sunday night. Mm. Otherwise, like I wouldn't really know what's going on in the morning. You then, you're not getting that extra bit of learning process. Whereas like, it's very evident that some people will want to do that and could commit to that. And that's like the, the hard work part of it. Yeah. Uh, it's very, it's very obvious that there are people who just don't want to do that as well, but then we'll still turn up on a, on a Monday and try and blag it. So I think it, it's, like the, the difference is it's more of a commitment to I guess the fact that you might like you know in the future you, you want to be in this certain role or this certain position but it has to start you know it has to start kind of five six years before yeah uh, because it's especially something like either calling or you know line up that sort of stuff is a bit more um yeah, you can't just turn it on. It's got to, yeah. you know, it's got to come from a learned a learned experience. I guess. Yeah. Well, there's a level of responsibility with that as well. Yeah. With obviously, when it comes to like that. So, because I always remember that one of the big things that that stuck with me. Now I finished um, very early on. We had that whole you know skill error versus effort error, and the mm -hmm. the thing we'd get come down on hard is if we didn't put the effort in, and that almost manifests itself. Then, you know, if you make a mistake in training or or on the pitch as a skill error, you know we can rectify that. But it was, if you didn't know your knowledge, yeah, that was when, you know, players and coaches would really come down hard on you. And, and I suppose that goes back to what you're saying in actually the, the hard work beforehand away from the pitch and actually on the Sunday night, going through the lineups, making sure you're prepped, ready for the day. Um, so we take that then and move forward again. So obviously you're, you had a really, you know, quick rise. You were, you know, first on the team sheet for, for the club week in, week out, and then all the England stuff obviously and rightly followed off the back of that mm -hmm. what about that step up so we've kind of you know we're, we're slowly working through and each level was another rise was there a marked difference between your first experiences with England compared to the Prem at that time or was it different intensity different in terms of detail or was it just was it a fairly easy kind of transition to make yeah I think probably um maybe easier than I thought but like I still you're never really comfortable like Fully comfortable in a in a in a, in a um, I guess a high pressured role like that. Mm. Um, I think what I was lucky is well lucky or unlucky at the time is you know I had benched a few so I had that progression of you know I've been in a few squads and then I benched a few and then like kind of post uh, 2015 World Cup then I you know then I was given a, a lot more responsibility in terms of you know, more often than not being a, a starter in that role. So yeah. I, th there was a step up progression from there, but I'd say that has happened throughout my career really in terms of it's been like a, been a step up. There hasn't necessarily been a huge jump in either in, in, in any space. Um, and you had your lifelong hero, Borfs, as your mentor there as well. Yeah, like, look, I, we've been very fortunate in terms of um, having a, a fair few people who do, it, do things differently, uh, you know, so, Hugh Vivian, very mm. different to someone like Steve Borthwick, um, you know, and, th and then the people underneath as well, so maybe, or younger, sorry, uh, someone like Maru and, mm. you know, Azikwe and, and Skelton, like all that, they're all very different characters. Um, yeah. So there's, there's, I think there's plenty to, to just, yeah, to, to learn really. I suppose it goes, yeah, and everything we're trying to do the 101st it is that the ability to learn from other people's experiences, but then draw it into your own context. Mm. Um, and I suppose as you're right you know, growing up we had a lot of senior players in particular to, that mm. played very high levels in the game to learn from so then with the um, so with England so you, as you say it's been that kind of step progression so it was never a, a huge leap um, 
and obviously you were involved in the, the 2015 World Cup and obviously we won't get into that in the detail, but in terms of were there any personal learnings from that that, that then enabled you to make the next jump up to what was then Lions and all the rest of it? But mm. Because there was, I remember as a, as a, a player as well and, and as a friend, you know, post that 2015 was where, you know, you, Jamie, really kind of then at internationally went involved like that. Mm. You know, it took a really steep curve. So was there anything personally from that experience that prompted that or was it, again, just a natural kind of progression? Yeah. Um, I think there was a good understanding of like a probably a, a good debrief time in terms of like you, I think the, the positive someone could take from a period like that is, you know, instead of like a blame culture, you know, someone you've got to take, take a, you know, yeah. acknowledge that where you can get better and stuff like that. And I think that's, because uh, clearly it was like a massive underperformance. There was still a lot of right, a lot, lot right. Um, mm. It's just there was, you know, when it came to game time, there was a, there was an underperformance. So there was, there was a basis for a lot that was built that was good. Um, but probably, like, I think the way, you know, things were reacted off the back of it, the maybe the pressures that some people went through and, and all that and in terms of media and all that. Mm. I think it's just a good, it was a good period to kind of, um, I don't know, like learn that you can, you can take stuff on and, and learn from that. Like, yeah. you know, have accountability, put your hand up and, you know, instead of, instead of passing blame. So I think that was quite a, I'd say myself, but also for, you know, others, that was quite a, a good learning curve. And then fast forwarding um, to a few years back now, but then obviously, you know, you, you, had, a, you had a run of a few injuries, didn't you? Um, mm. Building into the Lions tour. Yeah. I think the couple of years before you had a few, a few nasty ones. Um, yeah, yeah. And I still remember to this day, I can't remember which injury it was, but you came back from one and then played 80 minutes against New Zealand, throwing, throwing mm. straight off the back of yeah. at least a few months out. Um, and, and I suppose that goes back to your, you know, thinking back to the academy days of just grafting and, and, and putting a shift in. Um, and then the Lions call up obviously came off the back of a, a spell out with injury as well. Yeah, yeah. So not only were you making a step up to, you know, the, the highest level that any Northern Hemisphere player could ever play. Yeah. You were doing that off the back of having a decent stint out that year as well. So what was that? Obviously, I imagine it was pure relation to, to get the nod but was mm. there an element of anticipation or anxiety going into it or was it you know I've done all this I'm, I'm good to go this is where I'm, I'm yeah. meant to be um, tough one really like, I had yeah like to like you've had plenty of injuries so I won't dwell on it but um, you know there, there's there was a period and I guess like I don't know how many ops you had I've had about seven so that like yeah. you've had, you're not far behind yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so there's, like there's but there's a there'll be a lot a lot of time where you you know you are injured and you uh, and there's so yeah it's a downtime but also it's you know it's time you could be learning could be getting better mm -hmm. so um it's yeah I think that that period was probably pretty tough I think um I got back playing I got back playing all right especially in the warm up games um I played very average in the in the first test uh, the actual the actual test but I mean like I think that that whole that whole time, it was yeah, it was like a good challenge, you know. It, it is the best, it is the, the the top rugby you can play. Uh, so it was a unbelievable challenge to try and get my body back in nick for for that. But yeah, I think I've had that in, I had that for this World Cup as well. I had a yeah. you know, an ankle operation kind of um, in the pre season for the World Cup. So yeah. you know, it, it's it's it, it's a well rehearsed uh, yeah. trick. You know, it's it's. If you get an operation in the pre-season, it means you don't have to do the pre-season. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I happen to be a lot, not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it's it is boring. It's, it's a tough time being injured, and like you, you know, you, there's you know all about it. It's, it's time probably when you question yourself the most. Um, but then off the back of that, I do think is when you learn the most about yourself as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, um, and I think with you looking at your career, it's every. And there's no way I would have been able to do it. But every time you've had an injury, you then come back into the, as I say, playing against New Zealand, I think it was your first game back, the one I was talking about. Then you had the Lions, then you had the last World Cup, all off the back of a decent stint out. And you got back into it as if you'd never, never left. And I suppose that's testament to the mindset and the, I say, the, all the graft that you spoke about mm. early on. Um, so starting to edge away from from the rugby side of it now, obviously as I said before we started recording, rightly on brand. Um, 
talk about four, <laughs> four, five. Um, so when did you, when, how did the idea of four, five come about? When did it come about? Um, yeah. And when was the official, the official launch? Um, so it came, so me and Dom are in an, in an, in another business. So the other co-founder Dom, D Dom Day, uh, in another business, but I guess we were just like spitballing ideas. And, and in 2018, beginning 2018, CBD became legal for athletes to use. Mm. Um, and, and with that, I think there was kind of a realization that, well, I, I, he had an op 2018, January, I had one in February, uh, mm. and we're just discussing like what we can do bits of recovery, all, all sorts of uh, ideas floating around. And I guess it was a combination of, uh, you know, liking the product, um, thinking it, you know, backing it, but then also, you know, there's an opportunity within, you know, within US, it was kicking off quite hard. Uh, in UK, it wasn't, um, you know, it, things trickle through like that sometimes. So um, for us, it was a good opportunity. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of launched, we started talking about it properly in maybe March, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, launched in December 2018 um, and yeah it kind of went from there we've been fortunate enough to get into like places like Boots and that um, but I, I, it's been a it's been very fun and I, I think in yeah. terms of like injuries and bits like that it, it makes that 10 times easier to, to go through uh, but it also means I don't know like you have good training days you have bad training days but then if you've got other stuff to come back to then it's just you kind of you take your learning it, it improves that learning process i think like you, yeah. you've got less time to dwell on it you more time to think okay well i've got to get better at this i'll do this i'll do this and then you then you can crack on into to something else so and what about you overthink some stuff sometimes yeah and what about because obviously we always get told as rugby players you know you learn a lot of transferable skills that you can use mm. in later life and um and i discovered that because i i made the transition when i, I had yeah. to and i went into the real world um you're kind of doing them both at the same time yeah. so you know, you're still playing and operating in business and, and a very successful one at that so is there anything actually are you able to kind of reflect and and look at what you've done in rugby and go actually learning that or having that ability has actually really helped me with mm. four or five like has there been real crossovers or are there are they two separate kind of beasts in terms of how you look at them yeah, um, I'd, I'd say a fair chunk is separate, but there's a, there's a lot on like the, I guess the relationship side. So um, I, I think we're we're unbelievably sheltered as rugby players. Like it's like yeah. it's it's embarrassing actually. Yeah. Uh, and like, I guess I'm in a really nice opportunity where I can speak to it and, and get hold of like some really very uh, talented and experienced and people who've done unbelievable amounts in their field in business. And kind of like pick their brains and learn from them. I think the one thing which, well, a few things. One is like we're quite used to having that quick feedback loop. So we play a game, we play crap, you get told what to do, or you play a game, you play good, and you you know you get congratulated. And then yeah. so you're always working on like a week to week basis, uh, and it's always like mentality of learning and improving. I think that mentality, um, if you can bring it into like into into business and and also like just your conversations as someone maybe. So if I'm trying to do something in business and I don't really know too much about it, like I think what what we're good at is not having a big enough ego to, you know, to question someone and ask them, look, what's the best way to do this? Uh, how can I learn from you? How can I learn from your experiences? Where, but because I think that it's installed in us that you know you, we always get told you know it's pretty blunt stuff uh, and you've got to turn it around quite quickly yeah. and you've got to learn from that. I think that's the biggest thing which I've found quite interesting. The it's almost that level of vulnerability, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the ability to to learn is 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 ingrained in us a little yeah. bit more than I'd I'd see maybe in some other uh, areas of life. Um, mm. And I, you've got to you've got to have like you've got to be curious. You've got to have that that want to learn. Um, yeah. But I think our egos well, on on majority level are you know a little bit lower that so that we can we can actually learn from people um quite quickly and yeah. you know, we can accelerate that process a little bit um and it's yeah, and it is it's point. yeah and it, it's going back to kind of what we said at the start it's the, the the ability that ability to to learn and ask questions and and kind of need to improve hmm. that doesn't matter as, as you've you've kind of said there it doesn't matter what area it's in the only difference is just the context in which you apply that mindset so as a rugby player you apply it to rugby and in four or five in business you apply it to yeah. a business but the principle actually 
kind of crosses both. So, and, and I think in, in, on, a, on a timeline frame, like I know I don't have to be the, the best. Like what I guess eighteen month, um, eighteen mm. months ago, I, I know I didn't have to be the best businessman then. But as long as I'm improving quite quite yeah. a quick rate, then I know that maybe in the next three or four years from now, then you know I'll definitely be able to hold my own and have the experience of you know, or picking the brains of some of the, you know, some of the best through the contacts mm. that we can get through rugby. So that's, that's what, that's what I'm finding quite exciting at the moment. Yeah. The ability to talk and um, take on board, you know, people who are clearly 10 times more experienced, um, you know, in, in their field than, than myself. Yeah. And, and, and it shows in, in four or five, now as you say, you, you said extremely blase, but you know, the deal with boots and, um, and it's growing at a, at a rate of knots and, and becoming a you know, fully established. I remember when you, you sent me through my, my first batch and because it was from you, I just assumed it was going to come in a, a blank brown cardboard box and, a little, <laughs> and it came through and it was you know, properly branded and all the rest of it and it, it's, it's flown. So, so all of that kind of takes us up to, to 2020. Um, and then in 2020, obviously, with everything that's going on, with the pandemic is happening, but but for you, on top of that, obviously pre-lockdown, we had um, the situation with the club, which we're not going to go into any detail about that. But in terms of your, you know, running a, you know, fast-growing, truly fast-growing business, um, obviously your, your ambitions with rugby. Mm. When that news dropped in in January, and and what was the kind of outlook then? I mean, it's probably more the rugby than the business, but mm -hmm. how was that, that kind of information taken on and, and how do you make a plan to kind of move forward with it? Yeah. Um, I think like I, I'd probably structured my contracts uh, in, and, and that's probably uh, the first thing someone would think of is, okay, is it going to affect my contract? All this sort mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, so I was quite happy on that front. Like I'd, I'd done the, uh, I'd, put in place a couple of yeah. years ago stuff I've wanted to, to have in place, yeah. not for COVID, but for this time in my, mm. in my, in my, in my life. And, and that's what that all right, I think. Um, so on that front, I was all right. Yeah. Uh, obviously it's, you know, it's, I would love to finish off the Six Nations, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, there's games would, you know, want to be, wanted to have played in and, and, and yeah. so on. Um, but yeah, I, I think there are things, you know, a lot bigger than just rugby sometimes, and this is clearly one of them. Um, and and actually, like although there, like I said, there are a lot of people who who have suffered in this period. Um, like I've I've found it, I don't know, I've found it really really fun. I've enjoyed yeah. it. Like I've yeah. I've, I've, so so how's so how's it been then? Obviously, you were saying about with four or five when you're injured and having something else we're getting on with. And as you say, you know, during lockdown when. 98% of rugby players are you know, trying to do as much training as they can, but there's not a lot else going on. You've obviously had this business to, to manage through, you know, what is a pretty, been a pretty rough time for, I think, businesses across, across the world. So from that point of view then, how, is, how have you done that? Because you've obviously come out the other end still in a, in a fairly decent situation. So how have you and Dom done that? And was there any anything within the last few months that you had to drastically change in terms of how the business operated um, or any new ideas you've got coming out the back of it as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, so um, I think on a, on a rugby point of view, just, you, know, you can continue training, you can do everything you need to at home. Um, but then business, um, yeah, there, there were like large changes in what we try to do. Uh, obviously, trying to make everything a little bit more e-commerce, everything online, push that a little bit harder. Um, I think we were quite exposed in stock levels because we'd bought a fair chunk for mm -hmm. COVID uh, for for boots, and then obviously COVID comes in. So you, so it's just trying to figure out ways of like where you, where like where you, where your weak where your strengths are. I think we've done a fair chunk online. Um, so for us, it's you know, it was quite an easy shift over. Uh, and now, uh, only now are like some orders coming back through from, from boots and bits like that. So right. I think it's, it's, yeah, it's just about being as flexible. We, we did a really good, it probably prompted us and a load of other companies to be like, okay, let's, let's see where we can tighten up our, our costs. Let's yeah. see where we can be a bit more streamlined. Um, I think a large priority of what we're trying to do is like, you know, build, build a really good team um and put them first so you know we, we 
tried to well we committed to not cutting their wages as long as you know it doesn't go on yeah. for forever so just really trying to put that sort of thing first but then also there's got to be a buy-in from them that they're going to have to you know put a bit of hard graft yeah. in as well so just trying to like negotiate that okay well we'll try to look after you as hard as we can but you guys have to like you know have to yeah. put it in as well so you know there's been compromises either side i guess um yeah. but yeah we've also been incredibly lucky to be in a more of like a, a wellnessy sort of area so mm-hmm. like our, our the first four months were you know did quite well for us so it's it's okay. like, we can't complain obviously there, there are people who will be in situations where they literally can't do anything they could they could be the you know yeah. they could do the best things possible but still be absolutely crippled so it, it, there's a massive sense of, of luck in that part, but um, I guess we're yeah, just trying to steer what we, where our strengths are and just try and double up on them and then streamline a bit as well. Because like, we're a business that has been quite growing quite quickly, but also like we're not unbelievably process driven. It's more like, okay, we'll do this because it, it makes sense now. So we're just trying to streamline that process whilst there's a, you know, a little bit of a down period. Um, and, and in terms of that, that process of actually you know looking at the cost thinking where you can streamline and mm. and look to see where you're vulnerable what does that did that process look like was that a case of you and dom just sitting down and literally hashing it out and saying right this is where we need to look at this is what we need to do or was it was it more um on the hop type stuff you know so something happens you go right we need to do this yeah uh, probably sitting down sitting down with mentors sitting down with um our employees and saying, look, where, where can we make this better? So, um, you know, it might be, we have, we have a, we had a company car, so we get rid of that, but we still try and help out the guys who were using that car as well. So it, like, it's just, yeah. at the end of the day, it makes better sense for the business, but it, you know, we're not taking away the privilege of yes. you know, taking the car away. So we're just trying to talk with the employees around, you know, we, we went to, we then put our stuff through fulfillment where, actually saves us money also saves our employees time as well so it's it's kind of we're just going we're going through that phase now where we need to um you know just need to tighten up and and get more process driven and i think that's like a phase that you know people will do in this sort of period from from growth so three years you know they start to really look at you know where they can not cut costs but also streamline and just be a little bit more efficient i guess so what would be your so as an organization um that's obviously dealt with the covid period pretty well and has come out in a good situation what would be your kind of advice if someone came to you with their own business and said i'm struggling to come out of this Um, what would be what would be your your golden nugget that you'd give them um i'll tell them to go to someone more experienced <laughs> fair enough because like that's that's the reality of it right now I'm, I'm, we're, we know where we're at in our learning curve um uh what advice i don't know like, we put um when covid happened we were talking about doing like nutrition and supplement mm-hmm. stuff pre pre covid uh and for us it like my main project throughout covid has been putting in place a um a nutrition side to our business so it'll be four five nutrition and that will be like d3 bit c uh omega threes uh and, and and so on and that is that's not it's a, that's not a pivot because pivots like suggest we're going we're doing something wrong but it, it's a it's a change in tack to um you know to to adapt to the, the current climate of you know people want more healthier mm-hmm. stuff and and so on uh people more focused on their health as well so We've, we've put that in place and that'll be out in the next couple of months. So I think that's, I don't know, like that was an opportunity. It was an opportunity for us to upsell on our, on our current customer base, which is mainly, uh, you know, people in health and wellness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's something we're, we're pretty excited about. Uh, and that, I, I don't know, I'd say maybe just look at the opportunities that something can provide as well. So like, there was an opportunity to go into like PPE stuff. So we, we can change our, CBD facility into or where the CBD is produced into uh, hand sanitizer like we discussed that and it's, it wasn't really on brand but that was a large opportunity we could have got hold of quite early yeah um, but yeah I think just looking at you know obviously crisis mode you, you have stuff has to change but focusing on what has been good so for us it was okay let's let's make sure that the employees are dead happy yeah uh, and they'll continue to, to work hard for us um, and with us and and yeah i guess 
focus on that really. That's, what we're that's, that's brilliant to hear because for a lot of organisations, because that's quite a counterintuitive way to think in a, in a time of crisis, right? Let's make sure the team are happy first. You know, the first port of call for yeah. a lot of people. It's probably what, well, yeah, we'll end up in. <laughs> no, no, we'll we'll well. Well. <laughs> if you do, then I won't air this, this conversation. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's, it's a very counterintuitive way to think. Most people just go, we'll go numbers straight off the bat. Where you're going, and, and is that, do you think that's because of your experience with the club and, and your rugby experience that that is your first port of call is right. If we make sure our team are happy, then actually they're going to give us more throughout this period, which will mean that we're more likely to get through it. Yeah, like, it's hard because everyone's in different positions. Like if we were in, I don't know, um, you know, holiday, mm. we we're a holiday company that provided holidays, but like, gee, you're going to have to make everyone redundant. Like that's, mm. just, that's just the reality of it. But um I think it was quite forefront of what we wanted to do. Um, yeah. So yeah, there, there is definitely a, we want to build a, a tidy team first that we enjoy working with, that they enjoy working with us. Uh, I think that is a, probably more of a mentality, a longer term approach. Yeah. Mentality. And behind kind of, I suppose, everything we've spoken about, the, the two words that we've probably said the most is learning and trust. And actually, in all your bit of advice there, your gold nugget you'd give, behind all, everything you're saying, I heard was, was this having the ability to actually learn from the situation and actually take a step back and, and reevaluate where you need to go and what you need to do. Um, and going back to the trust piece in terms of vulnerability, because for a lot of people <clears throat> taking a step back and looking at the business that they've built and trying to see the weak points is quite difficult because you're essentially accepting that your business isn't perfect and you've got things to work on so that's that's a really interesting kind of point to make just for general life um and then moving on from that obviously looking forward now so we've kind of gone through the past we've done the present now looking forward obviously you're heading off um to japan to go play which is hugely exciting um and we'll all be tracking that what happens in terms of four five because maybe one of the things through covid with remote working that's probably made the move to japan yeah. even easier for you um, yeah sure yeah yeah but what's the what's the plan then with that so yeah, we've um, and these, these are all sort of stuff like I've had to take into account when um, I guess like a year ago when trying to decide you know where I want to play abroad. I know that, mm. but where what can I do? So it won't be France because that's very similar, you know, in terms yeah. of so it's basically you're you're doubling up, you're you're doing your workload again, but you but so I might as well stay in England. So I wanted to ex experience something different, um, and for me that was. Japan was like ticked all the boxes in terms of I can have a really good period now because it's only a six month season, seven month yeah. season where I can work quite hard on like a project. Um, mm -hmm. But then also, like, the, the hours aren't terrible over there. It's like mm -hmm. you, like, our morning here would be the evening there. Um, yeah. So, like, there's plenty you can, there's plenty of crossover. Mm -hmm. But also, like you say, like, COVID and that and working from home is, it's, it's, I'd say in a lot of situations, it's pretty proven that it's you know it can work quite beneficial. If anything, like I then I always end up doing more work at home, so uh, I will do majority of my work in, at home. I'll go into the office for maybe an hour or two a day. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's like it's fine. I can do you know we, we get like a twenty four hour system. We can answer stuff quite quickly if we need to. Um, but yeah, we are looking at um, people like coming in uh, so we've got a guy on on trial at the moment um, you know it could be part of the business um, but yeah it's it's all take it international well why why why, why? <laughs> um, yeah I, like, I think we're quite focused on just trying to trying to launch this nutrition and launch it well uh, in the UK and um, and there will be like some fundraising around that and making sure that you know that that goes quite well um, but we're really happy with our story, our plan, and kind of, of where we're going on that, and the brand, and everything, and the, and the product spec, and everything. So we're we're quite we're quite confident in that. Um, but yeah, that, like the the it's just trying to not get distracted by every opportunity there is because there's so many. Like you know, I think in our position we could go, oh, we could go down this route, we could go down this route. But I think that the ability to stick on track is just as good to yeah. than the ability to you know find new opportunities so. well i suppose one of these you, you'd rather you'd rather be brilliant at what you do than average uh you know five other things first um yeah. 
Yeah. Well, we're, like, we're bitten off a fair chunk in terms of like we're trying to streamline the CBD side and then look into mm-hmm. nutrition. Like that's a that is uh, what some some of the mentors have said has been quite a bold call in terms of uh, you know flicking across. But then yeah. like the, the market opportunities, all, all all that sort of stuff, and the and the the fact that it is it's not like we're going from CBD to I don't know, hair gel or whatever. It, yeah. It's like it is in the same wellness sector. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping that um, well, we're confident that it will, you know, there will be transference as yeah. well. Um, so, so to wrap up, then, um, I mean, first, it, it shows how much we've both grown. The fact that we're having this conversation now when we're, <laughs> we're thirty, and and actually, you sound fairly competent in it as well, which probably shocked us all and yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's so like, and, and I, I know obviously we, we take the mic and, and we know each other a long time and good mates, but um, it is hugely impressive, you know, what you've done in terms of if you even just take the business away and isolated from the rugby, that in itself is hugely impressive. And to do that at the same time of playing, you know, the highest level possible of professional rugby and, and, and everything you've done there, it, it's yeah, very few people, literally a handful of people, I think, have done it or, or could do it, of which, you know, thankfully, most of them are a part, a part of our club. But so within that, as you said, there's been a huge amount of learning and, and, you know, you have to be of a certain mindset. So if we kind of wrap up the entire conversation, mm. what would you say is, you know, has been the biggest reason why you've been able to be so successful in rugby and business? And that's quite a big question, but... Yeah. Um, well, we've got plenty to do on the on the business side, but um, I don't know. I think, I think the ability to, to, to work hard is, is a, is a, should be a given if you want to, I don't know, mm-hmm. do reasonably well in anything. I think that's like, you either be incredibly lucky or majority of people will work quite hard at it. I think mm-hmm. that's an underrated um, assumption. Um, yeah, I, probably like the whole, like the whole, just relax your ego a bit and like learn a bit. You know, I, I think that's that for me is, is huge because um, I've got opinions. I've got strong opinions in how I think I should do like mm. business or think I should do stuff. But um, I'm very, very open to to learning from people who are either less experienced, but also definitely more experienced. Um, I think that ability to, it is quite, is something I've, I've learned a lot more through business than I have through rugby, mm. I'd say. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of been able to graft and, and like, just, yeah, like I say, re- relax your ego a bit so that you can, you can learn off other people is, is, is pretty important. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, George, thank you very much for, for taking the time to to talk to me um good luck with japan good luck with four five um we'll see each other very soon for a beer anyway but thank you very much for, for agreeing to, to catch up with me all good cheers dude. cheers man so-